Scientists know that when it comes to earthquakes in Southern California, it's not a matter of if, but when. We know, for example, that the very high probability that in the next 10 years, there will be a big earthquake in California, because California is a big state with lots of faults, and we know we have earthquakes fairly frequently, so that's a pretty good bet. And that's a bet you should be prepared for. Survivors know that earthquakes can be terrifying. The main thing in my head was that this was so awful we were all going to die. So terrifying that it's easy to make bad decisions when the ground starts shaking. Running is one of them. My son must have been 10 at the time. I not only wanted to run, I wanted to run to my son's room because it sounds so dramatic, but I was so sure we were all going to die that I literally did not want him to die alone. And came running through here to get to Christopher's room, which is this room here, and fell, and um, fell probably in here somewhere. So in my run, in the dark, I stepped on a, a fallen picture, and it went out from underneath my feet, and I landed, at this, I landed on my cheek and on my shoulder. Ten-year-old Christopher was fine. In fact, he was asleep by the time his mother crawled into his room. Diane, however, was not. I took an x-ray. My shoulder was broken in three places. My cheek was not broken. My cheekbone was not broken, but the shoulder was broken. I can tell you every single thought I had that morning, just like they say your life goes, by, goes across you when you're dying, that's how it was. It was like a slow-speeded film that I was going through. And I can tell you every step I took, every thought I had in the process. And that probably saved me from more serious injury because I wasn't just terror running. And I think that's when you can get in big trouble. You should never run outside during an earthquake. There are a number of reasons for that. One is many of the injuries that result from an earthquake are people running while the ground is shaking. And then you fall down, you run into furniture that has moved into your way, you run across broken glass that's on the ground. People twist their ankles, break their legs, just trying to run around for what? To get to a doorway, which is no safer, really. Um, the other problem with running outside, particularly if you're in an older building or maybe in a business area, is that there's glass breaking, falling into the street. There may be bricks and other uh, signs and things falling down, which would hit you if you're running outside and on the sidewalk. But if you stay inside, you're probably better off, more protected. So that's what you shouldn't do during an earthquake. But what should you do when the ground starts shaking? All these questions that you have, go home and think about those questions. What would I do if this happened? What would I do if this happened? So if you're in an earthquake, what you want to do is you want to stay where you are. You want to drop on a cover under a table and hold on to the leg of a table. And that will keep things from falling on top of you. What are, what are those three words we want to remember doing an earthquake? Rock, cover, hold on. I think the more prepared you are for the quake, the more you think it out. Pretend one day that, okay, we're having an earthquake right now. And put yourself in the process of doing what you need to do to get out of your house. Practice. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready on my left? Yes. Are you ready on my right? Yes. Okay. All of a sudden, this building starts to shake it. And we say, drop, cover, and hold on. Everybody has their little special thing they want to keep. And that you need to protect. And the rest of it is just stuff. Your life is the most important thing. This is the Great California Shakeout. You're joining millions of Californians in the largest earthquake drill in U.S. history. Practice now so you can protect yourself during a real earthquake. This is an earthquake drill. Right now, drop, cover, and hold on. Unless you're driving, drop to the grounds now. If you're standing during a large earthquake, the grounds might jerk strongly and throw you down. Take cover under something sturdy to protect yourself from objects being hurled across the room. Hold on to it until the shaking stops. If you can't get under something, stay low and protect your head and neck with your arms. Now, look around. What objects might fall or be thrown at you in an earthquake that you should secure in place now? 
Finally, strong earthquakes may trigger tsunami. If you're near the beach during an earthquake, drop cover and hold on, then walk quickly to high ground when the shaking stops. This drill is over. Visit shakeout.org for simple steps to help you survive and recover from a major earthquake, including how to secure your space. Thank you for taking part in the great California shakeout. We're about to begin an evacuation of our buildings. This is done so that they can be inspected for potential damage. Even if a building is structurally sound, items such as lights and ceiling tiles may pose a risk, and utilities such as gas and electric could create the potential for fire. Some of you are probably entertaining thoughts of leaving campus rather than participate in the rest of the drill. If this had been an actual earthquake, your chances to do that would probably be limited. Think about the number of bridges, overpasses, utility poles, and other large structures located between campus and your home. In a real earthquake, would you even be able to get there? The final part of Cypress College's participation in the Great California Shakeout is ready to begin. Now that it's clear that the shaking has stopped, we will begin the campus-wide evacuation. Please follow the instructions of your faculty and other college staff as we conduct this portion of our drill. And thank you for your participation.